The idea of synesthesia is that multiple senses are experienced at one time. Lights, music, and art. You capture them in this beautiful place. This is way more beautiful than any gallery. We've always felt a spiritual connection to the mountains, um, just to this land in general. I'm Zachary Gillerlane and I'm a light artist. My name is Katie Flacavento and I'm a sound and light artist. I thought at one point I wanted to teach and do research, but at the same time I was supporting myself through a graduate program by playing music. I started as a viola performance major. And then I started doing more art. I had a major accident and broke my fingers. And at some point it was like, well, I can't teach and do research and do music and art. This one out. So I got my degree in visual art, and then once my fingers were rehabbed, it was this magnificent duality of, oh, I have training in both of these things now. How can I marry them? We like to create these sort of ephemeral installations that use sound and light as the main medium. It is still very new, this growing trend of light art. And part of it is just the access to technology. Two or three years ago, there was nothing like there is today. Now the wireless transmitters are significantly better. The batteries are better. Before, you would need to carry a lot of weight in. Now we have four cases. They weigh 20 pounds a piece, and we can hike them in two miles and light up a small space. So I take the score in a program so I could look at all the beat counts. And then from that, I preset all of the colors that will be generated at a given time. We see light as a sort of paint medium that can be here in one second and then gone in the next. We used to build large-scale installations inside of galleries that used tangible materials. And what we really realized was that we really wanted to be outside of the gallery space. We didn't want the white walls to tell us what we were going to do. I think also you get a different audience. Sometimes we think of galleries, art museums, it's a kind of a stuffy environment. Anyone can appreciate art and, and really be part of it. I say stand in the area that is art. We're at the Garden of the Gods, and basically what we're going to do here is create a sort of cinematic experience that will be here only temporarily for this evening and then will, you know, never occur again. We're more innately drawn to these natural spaces. And we also like abandoned spaces, things that just are mundane, that are not paid attention to. Bridge structures, we really like working with that. We're usually a little more gorilla with what we do, and sometimes no one sees what we do. And all we have is the artifact. I guess that's what we're trying to create, is a memory. When I was in my MFA, is there was a lot of explaining things and a lot of analyzing, and sometimes it's nice to not feel that burden of trying to come up with a rational reason why you do something. I always get a little anxious just because of technology. Things that are out of your control always make you nervous but I try not to think about that too much and just enjoy the experience. Katie, you know, you can just manually get them on, so at least you can see what the color is blend like, right? Eight, we nine, work ten. really well together. It's, a, it's an odd thing. Sometimes we, we, we bicker during the process. Sometimes it's really tense, but at the end, it's always harmonious. We always come out with what we want and something that we love because we pretty much put all of our raw emotion into it, good or bad. Art is a powerful force. I think it can build a language bridge between two people who don't speak the same language. I think it builds community. I think it can get people united talking about something, maybe even people who would never conversate in the same venue. I think it nourishes everything that our society does.